Um, I'd like to speak to you regarding two of the projects that uh, I did with Stratbrook Primary School last year. Um, there's some significant learning that happened from when we did phase one to when we did phase two. I'm not even information there for the Rube Goldberg machine, but something significant changed for us and the way that I teach and the way that the kids learn. So the first one was looking at building a Rube Goldberg machine and we had to provide students with some information around energy forces and leaks in the machines. And they had to design the longest Rube Goldberg machine that covered all the different types of machines, levers, pulleys, etc identify any transfers and then build an accurate way to measure the run of that, that marble using a makey makey. The second one that we looked at was uh, around future living. Now this one we, we kind of funnel kids into the eco-friendly housing, uh, internet of things and, and automated, and, uh, automated living and also um, sustainable living. But we try to throw the, I guess, the ownership of the problem over to the students. In the first one, I found that what we did is we provided them with the problem, which is much easier when we consider the curriculum that we're going to teach them, but then they worked on the solution. What was challenging in the second time is that they might have been going for many, many, many different areas within those three categories. So that was a very big learning uh, part for me. With the curriculum, and you will have this on one of the documents there, with the Rube Goldberg, because I was in a year six, seven, eight um, partnership, we made sure that we selectively chose all the different parts of the science, mathematics, and technology curriculum for those different learners. So the year sixes would be assessed against different science understanding as the year sevens, and as the year eights. I think that worked very well, but it did take a lot more time than planning the project <coughs> to select those carefully. We also had some things that were talked through inquiry, so you can see that there in the blue, and then on the, um, the assessment task on the unit plan that you've been provided with, that also shows that there. In the second uh, project, future living one. That was obviously a lot more broad because of the fact that we gave opportunity for students to select, I guess, their destination within the project. The curriculum that was to be taught was much broader. And we had to be able to, you know, uh, think dynamically when we were delivering some of the content to steer them in the right direction without giving them answers. We give them answers that we wanted to really stem from the living. So, you can see a lot more in the first one, less in the second one. I actually think the, the, the greater depth of teaching and the greater depth of learning is in the second project. This one here just shows some of the dispositions and that we provide an opportunity for learners to develop. If we think about this, this is the kind of key skills that through this program we hope they can transfer to any familiar and unfamiliar situation and apply creative thinking, critical thinking, problem solving, collaboration, communication to get an answer regardless of what subject it is. So we really focused on here um, looking at the uh, drawing conclusions and generalisation, big focus on working collaboratively and I can tell you there is a difference between collaboration and teamwork or group work. And I think through the projects, we are transitioning more to that collaboration. In the second one, we did focus more on um, research and skills. And I'll explain how we did that in the last slide. Um, and also organisation. When you put students to year eights, a year seven, a year six, in a group that they don't know each other, you are going to have some organisational skills. And you want to really ensure that everyone is participating equally, and you don't have student, uh, certain students, maybe the older ones, maybe male students, uh, dominating what goes on within the group. The learning curve uh, that we, that I found especially was when moving from the Rube Goldberg machine to the next one, 
we gave their ownership of the problem to the students. They had to identify something that was relevant to them. Instead of placing them in groups, what we did is we actually put up a series of articles, uh, YouTube clips, uh, journals, onto, um, I think it was just an online platform, um, and we got students to view those independently. They then actually had to select the articles and the videos and rate them each whether they were high or low engagement for them, high or low interest, relevance and importance. And from that, we then asked them to select one of the three topics. We then collected all of that data there and then we assigned students that have selected the same importance, we placed them in a group. We then allowed them to identify a problem that they saw in either automated living, eco friendly housing or sustainable energy, and then identify the problem and then identify the solution to it. So this is where I was talking about earlier about you know many different things going on, a much broader curriculum that we had to try cover, but also a very dynamic one where you might move from one group where we're talking about uh, making housing out of um, recycled shipping containers to move into another group that's looking at developing a lawnmower that runs on solar panels that can be um, that run in throughout the day. So it was, it was very, very vast. Students had to then submit a proposal. We had to look at it and we had to give them the all clear. Before, what we did in the first one is they just had to design the machine and we said basically it doesn't it does it have all the, the physics machines in it, can you describe the energy transformations, um, can you use mathematical skills to estimate, can you use statistics to work out the probability when this will occur. The math, science and technology, much more, um, I guess, visible in the first one. The second one, we, we threw that over to the students and, and made them recognise and identify what was in there. 